Hi, welcome back for lesson three on Fusion 360. Now, in this lesson, we're going to be making donut cutters, which is a shape with a hole in the middle. Just a quick recap, though, on lesson one, we made a basic cutter. That's where you learned how to do offsets, use the extrude, build walls. On lesson two, we did resizing and also fillets. And on this lesson, we're going to be using the mirror tool, the bridge tool, and a few more things on the scaling as well. So on this, we're actually going to create our own shape. It is going to be a basic shape still, all made in fusion. Um, don't worry, more complex shapes will be coming down the line. But this particular lesson will teach you the foundations of how you can make imprint cutters down the line, which I know you're all quite eager to learn. So start off with a blank fusion page. Click the top view, create sketch, select your plane. We're going to be making a petal leaf shape for this design. So what I want to do, I want to make it about 10 centimetres big to begin with. You know, from lesson two, that is a size I like to start with. And then I will scale it appropriately from there. So I'm going to draw a 10 centimetre line to begin with then. I like that because we're going to be using the mirror tool later and this will have a dual use then. So I've drawn my 10 centimetre line. So create, this time arc, three point arc, select the top and the bottom. And when you pull out either side, you can see you can make narrow arcs, wide arcs, but very roughly, I'm gonna eyeball around about two and a half centimetres wide. It's not accurate, but that's fine because I'm not gonna be doing another line the other side. I'm gonna be mirroring. So select my mirror here. This is the object I'm gonna mirror. And then I go to mirror line. This 10 centimeter line is my mirror line. So click OK. Now I'm going to get rid of this line here. I no longer need it. But what I'm going to do is create point. And I'm just going to stick a midpoint because I will need that later on. So we're going to create a couple of fillets at the top and the bottom. Just because I don't want that sharp point, I just want it slightly rounded. So modify fillet, or if you have sh uh, set a short key, um, use that. For example, mine is f shift and F. If you need to set your short key, click on the three dots, change keyboard shortcut. So for me, it's shift and F. I'm gonna make that a one millimeter fillet, bottom one millimeter fillet. Now there's two ways of measuring, um, but we do need to set some points first. So zoom in, create point, and set this one at the bottom and then zoom in the top set this at the top perfect so we've got two points now we've got inspect tool here which um, you can measure so we're going to select that select your top point select your bottom point so that tells us this shape is now 99.539 tall um, yours might be slightly different. That's absolutely fine. Now, you can write this number down if you want, because um, you will need it to be able to resize it in a moment. Generally, with something like this, is not something I will always do. I kind of flick between using the measuring and also the next method. I'll select the line. Select the top point. Zoom down to the bottom. I will not click on it, but as you can see, my measurement box that's highlighted blue. So if I control X, I cut that out and click escape. And now I've got that measurement in my keyboard, in my clipboard. So I don't need to type it down. I don't need to write it down. So we're going to use a select window selection keyboard shortcut one. I cover all the shape. Remember, modify and scale. Oh, a scale here. A scale, which is a keyboard shortcut W. So I'll pull that W, my midpoint, which I set earlier. Now, don't be alarmed when you see this next bit. I'm going to type in 100, which makes it 100 times the size it is. I don't want 100 times the size it is. So I'm going to make it a fraction. So I'm going to forward slash, paste in my measurement, get rid of the millimeters, click OK. And then if I inspect, you'll be able to see that this is now 
100 millimeters exactly. And that is my basic shape. I'm going to make a copy of this because there's going to be two ways that we're going to be making a donut hole today. So I'm going to copy this. Look, control C on my keyboard, control V to paste. Pull over to the side. You see these little dots come in here. Um, make sure you leave enough space between the dots of this shape and your other one that they're not overlapping. So I'm just going to pull that one over here. Perfect. So I've got my two shapes. Now we're going to set the donut holes a little bit different from each other. We'll produce different results, but um, you'll be able to see what ones you prefer. In certain designs, you'll prefer one way over another. So for this one on the left, we're going to use the offset, if you remember that, which is keyboard shortcut O. Select the shape. Now we're going to make it a minus because I don't want the offset on the outside. I want it on the inside. So let's see what minus 20 looks like. Minus 20. So that's a whole a little bit too small. Let's try minus 15. That's better, but I do want a little bit smaller. Minus 17. Yeah, I'm happy with that shape. Now, I don't particularly want the shape in the center if you're happy with it, but I want to keep it. Um, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to select this line, select this one, Control C, Control V. Let me pull up to the top. I kind of want it. Maybe a little bit closer to the top. Perfect. I think I prefer it there. So I'm going to hit enter. But I need to get rid of my old shape. So use a trim. Cut away what I don't want. Perfect. I'm happy with that. By all means, you can fillet the inside as well if you want. So shift and F. If I like that. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Perfect. Now the next way, we're going to copy this shape. So it's a window selection keyboard shortcut one. Drag it over the shape, control C, control V. Now you want to move this to the side because we're going to rescale this, but we're going to put it back. So make sure you've got to move it over to a nice number. So in this case, I'm going to move it over 90 millimeters. I'll remember 90 millimeters that I need to move it 90 millimeters back. Okay. And highlight over, still window selections, keyboard shortcut one if you need to press it, but pull it over. And it's a scale, so modify and scale or keyboard shortcut one. Select my point in the middle. And let's see what point three looks like. Okay, that's too small. Point four. Yeah, I'm happy with that kind of size. Okay, highlight it all, and then you got your copy, or not your copy, we're moving it even, say, highlight it all, and move. So we need to pull it 90 millimeters back, and there. In this case, I also want it a bit further up, so let's have a look. So I like it about 10. Perfect. So as you can see, let me just get rid of the points for a minute. And let me get rid of the dimensions and the constraints. So you can see it nice and cleanly. So as you can see, we've got two quite different ones. This one's far longer, narrower. And then this one is more of a direct copy of the outside shape. So these are basically what our urine cutters will look like. But we actually need to connect these outside lines to the inside. So there's a couple of ways that you can do it. Um, right. For the left one we'll do first of all then. I'm going to select this. Now I'm going to figure out very roughly where I'd like my bridge. I'm going to draw a line. Okay, so I've got a line in the midpoint. O for offset. Let's just make this 10 millimeters down. Over offset minus 10. So at this moment, I'm on a 10 centimeter cutter. Now it gives us a 2 centimeter bridge. Let me just pop in constraints line. Now, what we want to do, we want to stop the shape from recognizing these lines of offset of this. Because if I snip this, it can sometimes disappear. Those apparently it did not in this one, but that's fine. So I'll go back 
because if you have a where you do snip this one and if it disappears on the others all that you need to do is get rid of these symbols that recognize their offsets but in this case then as it didn't didn't really harm us in this instance and then get rid of what's outside here and get what's inside the hole so basically these are going to be small extruded shapes that will connect the outside as uh, the outside to the inside for this one we're going to do slightly different we're just going to do a rectangle and we're going to snip off the extra outside the shape I do have a little one bit in here so I'm going to snip it get rid of that and there we go now I don't want 10 centimeter earrings my neck is not long enough to carry off 10 centimeter earrings so I'm just going to highlight them Control c on my keyboard Control v I'm going to pull them off to the side so I can work them here without harming my original sketch in case I want to make different sizes in this case then I'm going to say you know I'm going to make four centimeter earrings so because they're both going to be the same, covering them both. W for the scale, select a point, and I'm going to make them point 0.4. Perfect. So they are now four centimeters big. So we're going to set our offset. Um, we are going to, in this case, um, do sharp edges for both. So I'm going to set my first offset at one millimeters, my next offset at three, and same for the other shape. So one, three, and we also need to set our offset for the inside of the shapes, okay? So here, minus one, and same here, minus one. Okay. Perfect, so we can now finish our sketch. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to start on this left one, and once we've completed that one, we're then going to do the right one. So go to surface use this orange extrude here on this outside line what I'm going to do I'm just going to only make this two millimeters tall for the moment and remember just turn your sketch back on because that is a first extrusion and create and thicken so on my keyboard that is shift and T I'm going to do I'm just making this one millimeter thick outside the reason is I want to give this hole here a bit of strength um, and once the shape is fully built you'll be able to see why now e for extrude which pulls a solid blue extrusion i'm going to select this bridge shape this bridge shape and i'm going to make it two millimeters thick but i'm going to make sure the operation is join so therefore this is what i call the bridge and um, so this would be connecting the inside hole to the outside when you come to make an imprint um, your imprints will tend to quite often have bridges uh, to be able to provide support and when somebody's pushing down on a cutter um, it makes it gentler on their hands as well but that is set up now we're going to start with the cutting walls then so we need the orange extrude select this one here and select this line here we're going to make these 12 millimeters tall okay now we can't thicken this line and that line because one's going to be going outwards and one's going to be going inwards so shift and t and make this point four four make sure it says join on this one because i want the wall going inside i'm going to make a minus point four four join and i'm going to select my support walls now so e for extrude because that'll bring up the solid blue extrusion now I can make both, do both these at the same time because they're joining onto existing walls. So my support walls are 10 millimeters tall. Join, and then my handle. Okay. So that is, let me just turn that off for a minute and turn that off a minute. So that is my first donut cutter with you guys so you can see that when you cut out the shape you're gonna have this 
inner shape here. And then this hole will be cut out. So you'll be able to lift that out with a tool with your fingers, pinch it out. So you will have this petal cut out shape. By all means, as they have said before, you know, if you want to add fillets or anything like that, you can do. Um, you know, I'm not going to in this particular case, but that one is done. Let me just turn my sketch back on. Let me turn my layer grid back on. So again, with this one, it's going to be a very similar situation. So extrude the orange button. I'm going to make this two, and I'm going to going to out one. Extrude, which brings up the solid blue extrusion shortcut keyboard shortcut E. I'm going to do these. So two, so it's the same height as this line here. Click join. So surface extrude. This line here. This line here, 12 millimeters tall because these are my cutting ones. Shift and T. Extrude this 0.44. Operation join. Shift and T. Minus 0.44. Join. And then E on the keyboard for extrude, which brings up the solid extrusion. Select one millimeter gap, 10 millimeters tall because that is my support. Click join. And then E for extrude and the V, that is my handle. And that's where I set to join. Perfect. So let me just turn off my layer grid. Let me get rid of my sketch so you can look at them better. So these are the two cutters then. Very similar, you know, slightly different look. Um, but that is how you make a donut cutter. Um, so just to give you an idea of what you'd actually be able to see once they're cut out, let me just turn this back on. Let me just hide the cutters. So if you were to make these out of polymer clay, these are the shapes that you would be actually making then. And that is your polymer clay shape cutouts. Okay, so I hope you found that quite simple. Um, lesson four will probably be later this weekend or later this week, maybe on the weekend. Um, but just to give you an idea of what to expect in the future, um, I'll give you a little insight to my current design process here. So these are some designs that I'm working on at the moment. So what will happen is, for example, I've taken a photo of this door. I quite like the stained glass on it. And I thought that would make quite a nice earring shape. So from the get-go, I knew I wanted this teardrop to be separate from this top bit. So I started off with a design quite similar to it. Um, and then I copied it, pulled it over, and decided what I wanted to change on it. So in this case, I knew I wanted this petal here to be wider pulled out to the front and I wanted the flower to be smaller and the teardrop to be bigger and then I decided more of a lotus three petal flower and then a teardrop instead of a petal drop and then a chandelier version as well so this weekend I'll be making these into cutters and putting them on my cult shop um, but I will go into in future lessons a bit more you know how to pull photos in you know into Canva you know, some people, you know, will go over traceovers. Some people like to do that one. Um, we'll do how to draw, you know, from your reference photo like I have done. Um, but if you have any questions, anything that you'd like me to go over in future lessons, just drop a message below and I'll add it onto my lesson plan list. But otherwise, I will see you next lesson. Thank you.